Hey everyone! Today I'm going to tell you about a paradox in moral philosophy called the repugnant conclusion. So first, a question. Which of these two possible worlds do you think is better? First, a world with one billion people, all of whom are really fulfilled and happy. Or a world with billions and billions of people who are very unhappy, almost unhappy enough that they wish they didn't exist, but not quite. So they're leading lives that are just barely worth living, but no more. Personally, it seems obvious that the first world is preferable. But let me lead you through a little argument to the contrary. First, take the world with one billion extremely happy people. Call that world A. Now imagine a world B, which has that same population of one billion extremely happy people, but also has a population of one billion moderately happy people. Is that better or worse than A? Well, it's not obvious that it's better, but it's hard to see how it could be worse, right? Having an additional people whose lives are worth living, how is that worse? Now imagine world C, which also has two populations of one billion, but the first is slightly less happy than their counterparts in world B, and the second is significantly more happy than their counterparts in world B. So overall, two billion people in world C, everyone's pretty happy, and the total happiness and average happiness are both higher in world C than in world B. It seems hard to argue with the idea that, that world C is better than world B, right? Because total happiness, average happiness are both higher. So by the law of transitivity, world C must be better than world A. We made two transformations. The first made things definitely not worse, and the second made things better. So world C, which has two billion pretty happy people, is, according to the, these premises, better than world A, which has one billion extremely happy people. So maybe that doesn't seem too counterintuitive to you. But we can go through that same process again. Take those two billion pretty happy people, call that world A, and now imagine world B, which has an additional two billion people who are slightly happy. Still lives worth living, but significantly less happy than the first two billion. Now imagine a world C, uh, in which the first two billion are slightly less happy than their counterparts in world B, and the second two billion are significantly more happy than their counterparts in world B. So overall, everyone in world C is moderately happy, um, but not as happy as the original two billion who were pretty happy. Again, total and average happiness are higher in world C than in world B, so we have to conclude by the laws of transitivity that having those four billion moderately happy people is preferable to having the two billion pretty happy people. And as you might be guessing, we can do this process again and again and again, until eventually we end up with billions and billions of people who are living lives just barely above that zero uh, not worth living threshold. And that world of trillions and trillions of so unhappy they almost don't want to live people is preferable, <laughs> transitively, to the original world we considered of one billion extremely happy people. This is the repugnant conclusion. And it illustrates an inconsistency in these uh, seemingly common sense principles of morality um, that most people hold. First, that uh, adding additional people whose lives are worth living doesn't make things worse. Second, that uh, increasing total and average happiness makes things better. And third, that a smaller number of extremely happy people is preferable to a larger number of very unhappy people. Uh, people have different solutions to this apparent paradox. Some philosophers just bite the bullet and say, yes, that world of billions and billions of miserable people is indeed better than the world with a smaller number of uh, very happy people. Other philosophers take issue with one or more of the premises or of, of the logic. So for example, some people reject the transitive property and say it doesn't apply here. As for me, I really don't know how to resolve the inconsistency. From where I'm standing, each of those premises feels very true, and yet I also accept the logic that shows that they can't uh, coexist. I tried once for several days to uh, tweak utilitarianism uh, so that it wouldn't have this inconsistency in it. And I thought I solved it, 
And my brother still teases me about the time that he got a text message in the middle of the night saying, dude, I think I just solved utilitarianism, exclamation point. Uh, unfortunately, I rechecked my math a few days later and found an error, of course. So the repugnant conclusion, I think, has implications for the kinds of policy decisions that we have to make as a society about how many new people do we want to be creating in future generations or, or allowing to be created? And how does that depend on the quality of life that those future people can be expected to have? So, you know, it feels like it matters what answer we give to this paradox. So I intend to keep plugging away to see if I can find a way to have our philosophical cake and eat it too. Uh, but I wouldn't hold your breath. <laughs>